opportunity to share. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. You know what the Lord said to me? What? We could have an altar service. Mm -hmm. How many want to be touched? Mm -hmm. He said it's going to begin oh, yes. as I share the word. Amen. Some of you are going to need a Kleenex. <laughs> I better find one now. Because I'm here? Absolutely not. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is walking up 
up and down this room, and he wants to put his hand, not my hand. My hand is going to do nothing tonight, but the hand of God is going to touch you, and you're going to walk out of here saying, it's been good to be together because the Lord Jesus Christ showed up. Come on. So I don't like people getting excited. You're in the wrong place and you're in the wrong speaker. Amen? Yes. I better pray. It's funny. I went to look for my shoes to wear tonight, or yesterday, and I found out I left them at my father and mother-in-law's house. The last time I was there. How many know we're getting older? So I went and bought a, I went and bought a nice shoes, eh? You like that? I like that. And all I had was all kinds of colored socks. So I went today and got some brown socks. <laughs> Not to impress you, because you can't see them anyway. <laughs> I feel I can run through the troops. That's scriptural, isn't it? We're going to have fun. You are going to get zapped. Amen. All right. No, anything in me, and I said the Lord's going to lay his hand on some of you. Some of you are going to feel oil in your hand. He said, well, I've heard about that, but I don't know. Come on. Some of you are going to almost like see a vision. Pastor Jack, the altar call is going to start as I preach. And I'm going to lay down this mic and go and lay hands on you. If you need slap, I can slap you too. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, this is the day the Lord hath made. Every day we will rejoice and we'll be glad. And before we say any more, Lord, we give you all the honor. Not just words. All the honor. All the praise. All the glory that's due to your holy name. And I thank you for already spoken to me since I've been asked to speak, Lord. You are here tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And he is literally going to walk down these, around these tables and he's going to minister to you. And it doesn't all happen at an altar. It doesn't happen because some preacher lays hands on you. But it happens because Jesus Christ the Son of the living God Amen. is in our midst tonight. Amen. And we need to honor him, we need to praise him, we need to glorify him, for he's in our midst. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is, and he's there to heal, he's there to bless, he's there, there to deliver, he's there, he's there to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that work within us. Hallelujah. I know, I know something that full gospel want a testimony. And I'm going to testify. But I've been a preacher for over 45 years. So it's really hard just to tell a story. Is that okay? If they don't have me back, that's okay. I'm not just going to preach. I'm going to tell stories that will shake you up. Some of you, some of you know me. I'll say it this way. I'm as crazy as Dennis. And Dennis is crazy. Come on. In a good way. Oh, yeah. sure. In a good way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll just say it this way. Don't misunderstand me, Jack. If you ask the preacher to share, it's not just a testimony, but that's what I want to share. I got a dry mouth. And I got a water. Drink of water. I'm not trying to go against anything. Used to about half preachers. Speak. Years ago, you couldn't even be a member because they thought people would draw other people to their church. Come on. But now, you can be a member. It's good to be a member of right, right standing, isn't it? Some of you are looking at me. I don't know if I should have come here with that guy. He's kind of strange. Amen down there? Are you ready? Come on, I want to hear you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start off by this aspect is, how many are senior citizens here? You don't want to put that All of us. You hate to admit it, eh? We're all up here senior citizens. Not all. 
Up here. You're all seeing your sentences up here. Is that, is that okay? I got a reason for this. The joy is getting older. Is that true? The joy is getting older. How many know what I'm talking about? Can't hear as good? Yeah. You can't see as good? Yeah. You got less hair? Yeah. You, you drag your leg? Yes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know. You take your pills, you don't need to eat a meal? Come on. We don't... Eh? No, no, just this world. I'm trying to remember what this is. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not talking in a negative way. That's life. That is life. That's life. Come on. Yeah. I had a doctor tell me one time, he said, there's something wrong with your head. <laughs> and there is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? Yes. Think, of, think of us as getting older. How many don't like that? <laughs> one advantage, you can go to a restaurant and get a, get a meal cheaper. <laughs> but then we're older and we don't eat as much. <laughs> That's what you're thinking. Hallelujah. I'm like Jerry Lewis over there. <laughs> I thought he was dead. I tried to write. I tried to write my notes out a dozen times. I just have one little thing to read. I'm on the of the Lord. Is that okay? Yeah. Testimony. This is a testimony. I got to read something. Just a little page. He knows all the We're not all perfect. We say wrong things. We do wrong things. We fail. We fall. Uh oh, we even sin. Anybody agree with me? We get back up again. We learn. We grow. We move on. We keep on living. Our choice is to be positive or negative. Positive. The most important thing is we are we ready for heaven. Yes. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Is that right? Amen. If you're not serving God tonight, it's your night. Oh, you say, how can you say that? Because God's the one who draws you. God's the one who moves upon your heart and your life. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I was born, you're not going to believe this, but I was born in 1946. <laughs> Just after the war, I was a blue baby. I don't know the fancy term for it. My home was my home. My home was hot. My lungs. That happens to me. Ask my wife. My lung was collapsed. My there was something wrong with my heart. Oh, and I was. Blue. Now I'd already gone. My wife had my wife. My, my mother went into the hospital, and I, and I was born premature. Somebody, somebody. My wife told me another day, and she said, "You haven't changed." You know, my wife she likes to joke. I said, "Well, thank you. I'm still." Come on. But I had a praying mom and dad. I had a praying church. And the doctor told my mother. I wasn't there, I never heard him say it. <laughs> he said, it's a good possibility he's gonna die. Get ready. Oh, wow. Well, you know what happened. He didn't die. <laughs> I eventually died to sin. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. You like that, eh? Yes. But there was one more thing wrong. I found out later. I had something wrong with my head. Some people say, I agree with you. I have met you. Come on. How many know we need to be more honest? Yes. My dad, we had there was five of us, I was the youngest. He come back from the war and it just happened that I got I that I was born. You know what I'm talking about. All those men coming back. Family population grew. 
Is that true? Yeah. My dad died when I was 10 years old. I didn't have much of a life of, of a father. I was literally continued. I was healed and alive, but I still had was immature in a lot of ways. Yeah. But when that, my dad died, I still can remember at the graveside. They're putting the casket down in an old thing that God is so That's 67 years ago. And I got mad. And I grew up in the church. I knew Sunday school. I knew church and I knew a lot. I mean, I could imitate the preacher. <laughs> and when I wasn't serving God, I did. I used to be sitting at the back as a teenager and say, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. <laughs> Did you believe that? I was asked to leave the church. Do you think that what it did to my mother? Clifford, they say, would you please leave the building? Leave the church right now. You wouldn't think I would ever be that bad. When my dad died, I got mad. I got mad at life. I got mad at God. I just plain got mad. Anybody could relate to something? And you got nobody ever here gets mad. <laughs> and I got into crime. Those that don't know my story. At 11 years old, I was in a gang. From 11 to 17, I know it said a little bit of crime. You haven't got a clue. I'll tell you one story because one is enough. Five or six of us as a gang, we walked down the Second Avenue. At the end of Second Avenue, all the way away, was the police station. So you wouldn't want to do anything wrong, eh? We came across a bakery. You know the Luger story, but it happened. I was there. <laughs> we crossed, came across the bakery. All we thought of was, let's have some fun. Never know what the end result is going to be. Mm -hmm. Two or three of us went in the front door, just stood there, and the rest of them went in the back of the building, started moving over racks of bread. Those big ones. What happened? All those that were in the front that were working there left to go find out what's going on. Three of us were standing there. We didn't plan on this. We picked up the cash register. You know those old heavy cash registers? Oh, yeah. All three of us had to carry it. <laughs> you believe that as a teenager? No cash in it. What's no that? Cash. Oh yeah, there was cash in it. We took it outside. We never got it. Nobody caught us. Nobody chased us. Nobody. We, we dropped it on the ground because it was so heavy. There was four hundred dollars in it back then. Come on. That's one story. That's only one. And that's one of the good ones. I'm serious. I was so bad. But you know what I was looking for? Acceptance. Amen. My dad didn't want me and I continued to have some problems. It was very difficult to want to look after me. My, my brother's two years older than, than me. He got all the attention. One day I asked my sister, who's a few years older than me, I said, hey, do you remember Dad never, never paid any attention? I never sat on his lap. He never ever gave me a hug. I never ever got a kiss. Oh. It was old days when fathers would sit at the table and say, basically, shut up and eat. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody live through that? Yeah. That was my father. Yeah. <laughs> Never talked at the table like we do today. No, that's for sure. That's the truth. Yeah. And if you were bad, you eat your food, you don't eat it, you go to bed. Yeah, that's right. Anybody been in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good times. <laughs> good times. <laughs> good times. <laughs> I'm not making anything up. No, this is my life. This is my story. This is my song. <laughs>
praising my Savior all the day long. I've got so much. Why would God want to have anything to do with me? Because He loves us. Amen. Lord. How could God call me if He really knew my story? How could God ever put His hand on my life and call me to the ministry? Amen. Amen. I was like Saul. I can tell you 20 stories that will cool your hair for those that are bald. <laughs> you like that? You like that one? My school life, trying, I found acceptance through school life and getting in trouble. You want to hear one story? Because I can't tell them all. I was in music class. Why would I, you know, I failed a lot of times. I was a big kid in school. In grade seven, I should have, I should have been married by then. I was, I'm serious. I spent three years in grade three. They don't do that. Right? Then they took me out of grade three. This is, and put me in an opportunity class for slow learners. Then put me in grade four. I was too big for the tears. <laughs> now what was I going to tell you? A school. In music class. I made fun of the teacher because I wanted attention. Are you following me? I didn't get it growing up, so I was going to get it whatever way I could get it. Does that make sense? Yes. I brought a whiskey bottle into the church as a teenager. Well, I was a teenager. I was a teenager. <laughs> a teenager. I was, I was like a teenager in grade four. Anyway, I took a whiskey bottle. I peed in it. I said, okay. I put a cork on it. And when she was on the piano, I imitated. And I went, do re mi fa so naughty dogs. She said, Clifford? I always got that when I got in trouble. Clifford? Get out of this class right now. For one, this is one year. Music was on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I sat outside the door in the hall for a year. The vice principal came by one day. He said, he said, are you still sitting there? That's not right. I said, well, I'd like an office right beside yours. I got the strap almost every day that I was in school. I would be in the Guinness Book of Records. That was a big kid, remember? He hit me one day. He cut my wrist. I grabbed this thing and hit him over the head. Great seven. Oh, you don't know my, my story. He said, he said, you'll never do that again. I said, I don't think so. That, that expels from school. Imagine my mother. My dad was gone. I was the youngest in the family. My oldest sister was 20 years older than me. Boy, did they spread that in their family. Eh? I don't think they went to bed too often together. <laughs> it's okay if you laugh. It's, okay. it's reality. <laughs> you got that, eh? I'm doing it out there. Somebody will tell me later. You know what I mean? Where do I go from here? <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Sunday night, 1963. I was out all, all night before that Sunday morning. It was another day. The driver was a lot older than us. There was four of us with him. We went to Niagara Falls. You mentioned my mother. Me going up, doing all I did. Happen, she never found out. She said, "Are you still smoking?" I never quit. 
Until <laughs> later. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? I got home at 5 o'clock in the morning as a 17-year-old from Niagara Falls, and my mother said, Cliff, please, would you come to church this morning? I said, Mom, I'm unbeat. <laughs> Imagine? <laughs> you got to laugh at everything. <laughs> I, was preach I was preaching, I, I was sharing my testimony one other time, and I said to a lady, come on. I get yeah, I'm sorry. I said, come on, I paid you ten dollars to laugh. <laughs> and the place went on I'm, I'm glued. I didn't pay her money to laugh. No. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. Yeah. I don't have to pay anybody to laugh. They just look at me. Yeah. <laughs> when I preach so many, I asked my wife one time, I said, why do they laugh so much? She said, the faces you make. <laughs> Well, that Sunday night in a Pentecostal church in Old Sound, at the age of 17, there were three three guys from, I was in a Pentecostal church, there were three men from Eastern Pentecostal, well, we call it, there's another name now, and the guy that preached, they gave an altar call, coming home, coming home, never more to roam. Open wide those arms of love, Lord, I'm coming home. This is not the thing that everybody should do. The preacher was given the altar call from Bible school. He walked right down. Can I come up to you, brother? No, I can't get to you. I'll come to you. <laughs> he come to me. Listen to this. He put his hand on my shoulder. 17 years old. I've been in a rebellion so much. Come on. He said, young man, you're rebelling against God. It better be God. I wanted to get out there and have a smoke. Come on, how many know if you smoke, you like to smoke? <laughs> and he says, this is your night. I've heard that before. I've heard preachers say, this is your night. This is your opportunity. You might be dead tomorrow. I've heard that before. I grew up in the church, and I walked forward. Somebody at the back of the church spoke loudly. He didn't realize he said loud. He said, if Cliff Hodgson could get saved, anybody could get saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Six months after that, God called me to the ministry at oh. 17 and a half. Wow. Oh, praise God. How would God want to use me? Praise you, Lord. Amen? Wow. Anybody getting help? I know you're all perfect. I know nobody ever did what I done. Some of you done worse. Nod your head. That's right. Some of you nod your head because you're going to sleep. <laughs> In my first church, I'll just say this, in 1975, <coughs> people used to nod. For real? <laughs> yeah, really nod. You know what I said? Nobody's going to sleep when I preach. But it got louder. And I said, if you go to sleep, you have to know me. I was like, to go, I'll throw a hymn book at you. <laughs> you believe I'd say that? Yes. I did. Oh, I One man used to go like this. <laughs> He tried to go to sleep. He knew, he knew I meant business. I would have fooled. Because, see, I come from that side of life. And even though you ask Jesus into your heart, we still deal with the flesh. We still deal with frustrations and anger and hurt, disappointment. Come on. How many have had problems in your marriage? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> How many, how many raised children have been difficult? How many love your grandchildren? More than you love your kids. <laughs> you can send them home, or you can go visit them and leave. i got to get back to where I was. Three years later, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Did I ever change that? Yeah. How does that happen? How does that ever happen? At the Pentecostal church, they gave altar calls for salvation, for rededication, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, for healing. And when they were done, they said, now, if you're really serious, that's the kind of church, if you're really serious to see somebody saved, that's the kind of preacher I grew up with. He said, now, get out of your seat right now and come up here and get a burden for souls. I grew up with that. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Amen. Preachers have filled the trouble. You ever heard a guy preach? Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. That's all. They didn't say much. I have fillings. My wife always tells me. Rabbit trails. When I preached too long, she went like this. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. I, when I looked down, I thought, oh my God, i got to go home with that one. Nineteen sixty-six. I had a hard time getting filled with it. Anybody had a hard time? It's not hard to be filled with the Spirit. I'd go to the front, 17, 18 years old, 18, but for three years, they'd lay hands on me. No, the way they used to do it back then, they lay hands on you, they anointed you with oil, they slapped you almost, it seemed. <laughs> And they believed them yeah, putting their hand on you and giving you a little push. Yeah. They didn't realize because they're all excited. Hello. And he'd say, hang in there, brother. Let go. Speak it out. <laughs> and then suddenly I'll say, shut up. It's the truth. I went home. My hair's all messed up. I had a lot more hair. I'm saying my hair's messed up. And I still got oil on my face. I'm no exaggeration. <laughs> That's not the way you have to receive the Holy Spirit. No. That was the old fashioned way. They pushed me around praying. I'm walking up to church. I can throw it up with the Holy They push it down. I don't like preachers pushing people down. We've all seen them. I don't like to be pushed. Somebody says, boy, has that ever been annoyed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Set, go! <laughs> That's funny, I know. I gotta be myself. Yeah. You're honest. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Yeah. Some of you know me real well. And there are people in this room that I've heard. Don't get quiet in this church, I'll feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Fellowship. Come on. We hurt people. Yeah. Preachers hurt people. Yeah. And it's hard when a preacher hurts you. Because you think they're better than that. Mm -hmm. Preachers are human beings. Amen. Amen. They get up in the morning and put their pants on like you. <laughs> when they get it hopefully, hopefully the right way. <laughs> <laughs> they have to put on a front. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Those are, come on, you gotta always get yeah. up. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I couldn't be better. <laughs> Everything that happened this week was was a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so. It's not so. Pastor Jack and I know. Come on. He's come to church when he was he he didn't want to preach. I was working with him. He said, Could you can you preach today? He didn't want to preach, he might tell you off. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Jack. I'm not telling we're human. That's just our calling. Is that right? Yes, it is. Say right. Yes, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name is right. So I entered the ministry in 1975. Listen to this. 45 years have gone by. I got saved in 63. I've been saved for 60 years. Wow. 60 years! Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. You didn't think I looked that old. <laughs> 60 <laughs> years! You know what I think? I've had, you're going to miss this. I've had 60 years to sin. Is it right? Yeah. 60 years. I think we should get people saved, hit them over the head, 
Send them to heaven. <laughs> then they wouldn't have an opportunity because we deal with everything. Come on, the flesh. Somebody says, we never argue. You liar. I never go to bed mad. Liar. <laughs> People say, I got it all together. I say, I've got it all together, but I got a few pieces missing. <laughs> I told people, and I'll tell you in a minute, my elevator don't go all the way to the top. <laughs> I'm a brick short of a load. <laughs> one, I'll tell you something, I was in the hospital one day, and you know, the hospital in the North End, you got all nine floors? There was me and a nurse. And if you get to know me, I have to talk to anybody. If I feel good, if I don't feel bad, I don't talk to nobody. Oh, that's right. oh. Hello, that was my dad. And I said to the nurse, when we get to 9th floor, we're going to be closer to heaven. She says, oh my God, no. She said, I don't want to die. I said, I'm not talking about dying. She has that little phrase, a little testimony, in a humorous way. Yeah, she made me still thinking about it. But when you get to the night floor, you're a long way from heaven. Oh, yeah. But if we can pray a simple prayer, yeah. ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. Amen, we can Christ. pray a little prayer and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We can pray a little prayer and be healed. Yeah. We can pray a little prayer and be delivered. Yeah. I've had all of that happen in my life. Yeah. I've seen God move. I've seen signs, wonders, miracles. I can't do it. I can't. I can't take care of a fly. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a fly by fly news. <laughs> well, last church, I'm in a different denomination now. They kicked me out. No, they didn't kick me out. <laughs> Nineteen? Yeah, okay. Nineteen? What was it? I don't know. It was about 1984. I pastored the People's Pentecost Church in Sault Ste. Marie. Not too far away, is it? Now I've got half my family living there. My mother-in-law and father-in-law live there. My, my oldest son lives there. My daughter lives there. When I go there, we can have a whole family reunion there. Which is nice. Well, I said 1984, they asked me to preach as a call. How many know what that means? To preach for a call, whether they want the board want to accept you. You follow me? They accepted me. I was shocked that anybody wanted me. They accepted me. The first Sunday was... Mother's Day that I preached. Mm -hmm. I, was in I could talk about my own mother and her dedication to the Lord. This sounds exaggerated. There were 60 some people the first Sunday I was there. To God be the glory. In eight months there was over 200. Amen. I've seen God move. Yes, Amen. I've seen God touch people like I say now. The altar time, I one time I said this in that church. I said, I don't want anybody to come to the altar tonight. I want to go to Swiss Chalet. <laughs> the gospel. Yeah, I was thinking that. And you know what happened? I prayed a closing prayer. The altar was full <laughs> because they were hungry for more. I'm tired of form. I'm tired of ritual. I'm tired of a dead church. I'm tired of where you're living and where I'm living now. God wants to do a marvelous work. He said the last day, it's okay. I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And all my servants, and all my head, I will pour out of my spirit. Come on, you guys, black people down there. Africa, come on. Praise the Lord. You know, when we come to this, 
Breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great breakfast. <laughs> Imagine, eight months. I wasn't ready for the pastor of church of eight, of, of over 200. I had an assistant pastor. His wife was my niece. They were there before I came, and the board said they could stay. We counseled every day. Sault Ste. Marie was considered the divorce capital of Canada back then. Yeah. And, you, and you maybe never heard that yeah. because of all the steel plant, the work shifts, yeah. men ran around all the women did too. Yeah. Heaviness in the church. Yeah. Divorce in the church. Yeah. You never knew who was sitting with someone. Was their wife or their girlfriend? Mm. Hello? Yeah. I had prostitutes that came from Toronto to receive healing in Sault Ste. Marie. Wow. Praise God. Praise the Lord. They came into the building with shorts, shorts, short, shorts. Short, short. Hello. There was a head and a bunch of legs. You had to watch what you looked at. Come on. Can a preacher be honest? Yes, amen. Thank you. There's three men here. <laughs> I'll say this. As a man, I don't care how old you are. If you've lost the ability to do what we know we all need and want to do, and you're involved in pornography, you better get help. I agree. Yeah. Well, it doesn't happen in church. It doesn't happen. You flip the switch. Come on to a naked woman. Do you want to flip another shorts? Do you want to look again? Let's be honest. Yeah. We're men. I told someone. I, one summer I was in uh, Walmart. This woman walked by me. I looked at her and I thought, there can't be a woman look like that on the face of the earth. You know what I said? I didn't realize I said, oh, oh. I said, oh my God. So here's the story. How we do it? I was gonna bring. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You, I didn't tell you the whole story. Because the story goes on. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to finish it in heaven. <laughs> God's moving. The power of God is falling. It was so easy for people to get saved, healed. I've seen deliverance. I've seen all kinds of things. I, I, they're at the altar, packed at the altar one day, and the Lord spoke to me and said, about a woman, I said, there's nothing in me. God does it. And I said to her, are you want to have a child? She broke down crying. Mm -hmm. Come on, there are people like that. Yeah, of course. Someone said, I got too many now. I'll give one away. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I did. Because I'm a little foolish. I believe God. I put my finger up. I said, Woman, you're going to have a baby. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. A couple people around her fall under the power. You know how it happened to you? Come on. They yeah. fall under the power. Yeah. Ushers were scattered around. Yes. Nine months later, I was in another church speaking. She walked in, pregnant. Nine months. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed preaching that night. Thank this you. is what happened. It was in the Water Tower Inn that I was speaking. She walked in, and I got so encouraged. I mean, when you're nine months, yeah, I think you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're ready. I said, Lord, you are faithful. Yes, Lord. You are faithful. Yes, Lord. You're the one that does it. I can do nothing. Amen. I said, bless her. And she took out two chairs behind her. Did she hurt herself? 
and I can tell you dozens of stories that God did. Yes. God did. Amen. Jesus did. I can't. I can't do that kind of thing. But God can. Yes, Amen. I can't tell my whole story. Do I need this. I I was going to get a special Kleenex, but the Lord provided this one. <laughs> hey, come on. In. They washed them. Uh, they, they washed them. Come on. You might look a little green. That's okay. <laughs> January the 3rd, I'm going to go back to my story. I went to the hospital. I went to the hospital. I had, I had, I had I couldn't breathe. And they checked me over and said, I said, you got pneumonia. But because I don't have a regular doctor, they don't, they're hesitating what to do. So they okay, I'll get an x-ray. I said, I went directly down the I had a hard time breathing. Mm. And I mean, I coughed and I, and I went, got the x-ray, and I wanted, waited for the, to get the return, never did. Finally, I went there, the walking clinic, and they said, this is crazy, nothing wrong with you. I said, I'm crazy in the head. I found out somebody else is crazy in the head. They at least could have given me a puffer or something. And I've been coughing. Thank God I'm not coughing tonight, but just in case. I got to blow my nose for the 400th time. I've got something to blow my nose in. <laughs> then I said, oh my God, what, what next is that man going to say? <laughs> Oh, rabbit. You don't want me to lay there. Some preachers would go like this. I don't think I'll do that today. <laughs> yeah. I can't help. God's giving me a sense of humor. I got to be myself. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. And I haven't been preaching for a while. So, Oh, what do you use this? I'm serious. I got one that I blew my nose in. Sorry, it's underneath here. <laughs> Here's a revival. Sault Ste. Marie. Two, over 200 people. David Main's came and spoke. I mean, we saw the best of the best. We had no lack of money. In that eight months, they gave me five weeks holidays. I asked to go to the deliverance seminar. I delivered somebody in a Pentecostal church, South Bend, Indiana. What they did, listen to this. They, I'll come back to my story. They gave me $10,000, a check, and said, God bless you as you go and use it forever what you want to do to go to conferences. And if you don't use it, I'll put it in your bank. $10,000. That's something. I'm having a hard, hard time getting to this story. Because Dennis keeps up for interrupting. You can't take him up. We have to tell the guys to do that too, couldn't you? Yeah, what do you do for a living? <laughs> okay. Now, anybody want to buy a house? See this brother in the, in the blue shirt with beautiful hair. <laughs> My, I'm remarried. Uh oh. Anybody been remarried? You're not a sinner. <laughs> You're not forgotten. Anybody need to hear that? You're not second rate. As I got ticked up. I got second time, yeah. He had to go tight. Listen, I had a guy come into my church. And he married twice. But he didn't tell us, I'm pastoring the Pentecostal church. You don't have people who have been married two or three times. And he cut in the pulpit. And he said, I've been married twice, and I'm looking for a new wife. Maybe she's in this church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had to talk to him. <laughs> and he never liked me after that. 
Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> In the midst of that revival, my ex, I my ex and old, my ex had 37 in a new converts class. She phoned all 37 through the week to keep in touch. One guy in the thing took you know, a lightning to my wife. And she left. I had two girls. I hope this helps somebody. Eleven and nine. Come home from church. She said, I'm not, it was a Tuesday night. She said, I got a headache. Lots of women say that, eh? <laughs> Good. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a famous story. <laughs> I like to be open. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Preach it, brother. Amen. <laughs> so I said, that's fine. I had an assistant pastor. Did music. My wife was musical, too. She said, I'm going to stay home. I got a headache. When I got into church, I had this impression. When I get home, my wife's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. I was with the Pentecostal Assemblies, no reflection negative on them. What could I do? The end result was I had a complete nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. I didn't know my name. I didn't know where I lived. Because see, I wanted, I needed security. I got security in ministry. I got security in a life. Mm -hmm. And she rejected me. I don't know why she'd ever do that. Hey, <laughs> she had an affair. And all the church blamed me that I must have had one. Sometimes I said, I wish I had one when I was hurting. Anybody with it? I'm going to be blamed. I'm going to go up there. I didn't have anything. I had an affair with Jesus. Yeah, praise God. But I went through hell to get there. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you go through that, we were at a men's meeting this, this morning. We talked on anger. Probably 40 men there at least. Frank and I, Frank's here today. We shared the testimony one with another. He said, can I come? He said, we exchanged phone numbers. We're going to go together. We're going to get up together. Hmm? Is that you? Hey, Frank. Frank. Not, that, not Frank. Who's Frank? Raise your hand. There he goes. Oh, I see. Okay. If we can relate. I knew that was a Frank or any, any real Yeah, Frank well, I'm a James, not a Frank. We can relate. That's not to put me up. That's my heart to touch people's lives. Mm. I started to share my, he shared his story. And I shared mine, he said, oh my goodness. I'm not going to tell his story, but he had some similar circumstances to mine. We can help people. That's right. We can minister to people. Yeah. He said, I don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't, can't do anything. Yes, you can. Sure. That's one thing I wanted to say. We all have a life that we lived and we went through things and share it with someone else. Amen. You don't have to preach to them. No. You don't have to tell them they're going to hell. No. Just care for people. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen? Yes. I gave up. Who's going to... I'm... The step, Pentecostal somebody said this. I don't put them down. They said, do you think you'll ever remarry? I was 39 years old. Uh, I said, right now I don't want to marry anybody. <laughs> I told him. I said, I'm hurting. I'm hurt by a woman. And I said, and this is what they said. They have to have their rules. Please send in your credentials, your certificate of ordination, mail it into a Burlington head office in that. And that's what I did. And the church that I pastored with over 200 people, the board of that church told me 
You're not allowed in the church. That's terrible. But if you do come, sit on the back. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You pastored a church of over 200 people for eight months that grew that fast, and now you're told you're not welcome. They did it to Jesus. I'm not blaming them. I'm not blaming them. I've sent money to them. Because I won't, I had a guy in my church that criticized the Pentecostal Sunday. And he was a big shot. He came from, you know, the Bible, what do you call it, Bible Belt? Yeah. And he preached and he talked against the Pentecostal Sunday. And even though I was hurt, I don't like that. I don't like people, people tear on the church no. and God. So he, he came into my office, and he, I, I had this look on my face, and he said, what's wrong? I said, you or no one else will ever stand in that pulpit and talk against the Pentecostal Sundays of Canada, because I was the pastor there, and yes, I was hurt, but God heals. And I said, you'll never back, come into this. He said, well, I can ask forgiveness. I said, it's too late. You hurt people. Some time went by, I gave up. I'm only telling you a little bit of my story. And I met Sandra. She plays the keyboard down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on. Good looking woman. We got married. <laughs> June the 14th, 1986. <laughs> oh, you're ready for this? You're not ready for this. She was 22 years old. And I was 40. You couldn't get married at Pentecost Church. You got married in the United Church. Isn't that interesting? Right in the same city where my ex was living with the guy. When I was going through a hard time, you dream. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You dream weird dreams. I fried her. I shot her. I, in my dreams. Her and her, her and her boyfriend were walking down the street in my dream. I I was hoping I was had a big truck and more than that. Because we understand. There's the pain. You say, you aren't much of a Christian. You're a pastor. <laughs> you can't think that way. I never think that way. Hello. <laughs> Sanders' mom and dad had a church in their home. They worked with underprivileged people, disabled people. All kinds of them, and they had burned up. He called me up. I was in the water tower. Area. I moved to the water tower. Area. Sandra came, came home to her mom and dad. She sang. First thing I did is look to see if she had a ring on. <laughs> I just had some healing like that. Twenty-two, forty. I had two girls. My oldest girl is 50. My wife is 59. Oh, you, know <laughs> you didn't ask me if you could tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> on the 18th, is that when you're having your next Wednesday? It's my birthday. I'll be 77. At the men's meeting today, they're talking about their next men's meeting is on, on March the 18th. They said, bring a big cake. So it is March. We love candles. March 18th in the morning, I'll be at that meeting. And at night, I'll be, we'll be together. What a, what a, what a God we serve. Praise God. Yeah, okay. i got to tell one more thing. I know. How, how when did I start? I was going to go and buy a whistle. I know it's long. But have to be beneficial. 
Have you enjoyed it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's only a part of my story. I found acceptance in a gang. I found acceptance preaching. And I wanted a crowd. Did I want attention? Yeah, I did. And the Lord took me from the pulpit real quick to the marketplace. And I have an office in the food court in the mall. That's a story and a half. I've ministered to about 12 people in the last little while. One of the men, can I say this real quick? Is an atheist. I had my Bible there. I had my notes. He come and sat down. Talked a little bit. A couple weeks later, he sat down again. I bought him a ticket to come tonight. Something came out. But he didn't come. I met Frank. He came. God will take you when you humble yourself. When you're not looking for people's acceptance. When you look at God's acceptance, Amen. our self-worth does not depend on our position or our possessions. It depends on our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 One more thing. One more thing. Because I know I'm like I'm like Jerry Lewis there. <laughs> oh. A little bit like him. I know it's wrong. I tried to deliver my soul. The last thing I'm going to share, people say you can't say that. Oh, it's going to be 77. Yes. <laughs> My father had a condition that I inherited. Anybody understand that? Mm -hmm. We found out later, you're not going to run for this either. Lord said, you cannot. Hold this any longer. I am bipolar. Okay. You know what bipolar is? Yeah. Yeah. High as the lows. Yeah. When I'm high, whoo, can I preach? <laughs> you're probably high today. Yeah, you probably are. When I'm low, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You're good. When you're low, you say things to my first wife, my second wife. Maybe my third one, no. Oh! 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 Is that okay to be honest? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you one more, Jack. <laughs> 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 I need to pray for you. The preacher's coming in. I've been doing really good for the last 10 minutes. You have been. I mean, in bipolar. The doctor said, you're bipolar. I said, no, I lost the whole pole. <laughs> he said, I've never heard anybody say that. I said, you've never met me before. <laughs> please, please, Jeff. Don't get mad at me. I know it's wrong. It's okay. It's okay. This is important. Because of this Bible. During times and such, I've been here 18 years. I went to Pastor Neil. I knew you need to hear this, Jack. I went to his church. Church. I went to his home. Listen to this. I was all alone. I was suicidal. Mm -hmm. Suicide. I didn't want to live. Think of my wife let me hear this. I discovered five ways to do away with myself. My bullet will do that to you. God called me. Bipolar person. Hello? And I went to his house. We talked for three hours. And I told him. I was seriously thinking of suicide. Come on. That's all low I got. And you know what he said? After telling him all the stories of how I was going to do away with myself. You know what he said? What? I want you to preach on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Praise your Lord. 
No man on the face of the earth pastor would ever ask somebody that's considering suicide to preach. <laughs> we were working together at that time. I went home, bless God, I opened the Bible, started to pray, and yeah. I got a message. Hallelujah. Because there's a gift there. Praise the Lord we're God. In the Bible, we're back in the Bible. We didn't have to worry about it. Yes, amen. Praise you, Amen. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Amen. The next Sunday I preached, nobody knew. Nobody knew what I'd gone through. Praise God. That's only a scratch. God's faithful. A father, my poor, took years to find it out. They didn't know that back then. I inherited it being back to my bowler. God called me. I'm 77 and I'm on my way to heaven. I have many more doors that I will open up to. Yes, Lord. Amen. And you think you're done because of your age. Hallelujah. Glory to you. But a new path is opening up. I've had months of dryness, not preaching. And then when I'm asked to preach, I preach too long. <laughs> Father, whatever you want to do in this building, yes, Lord. whatever you want to say to people, Thank you, Jesus. whatever you want to do to people, yes, Lord. do it, Lord. I know you're going to do things. Thank you, Lord. Don't look. I tell the people, don't look at me. Don't look at my past. Don't look at that somebody's praying for you that's been suicidal. I said, you got to be in honest and it's going to help people and so Hallelujah. you come for prayer we'll simply just God you may need to put my hand on you just in front of you Hallelujah. and you need to be ushers here if you shake, you laugh, you cry or you fall into the power it has nothing to do with me Amen. it's everything to do with Jesus Christ Hallelujah. the Savior, the Healer the Deliverer Amen. I don't care if you're bound by something. You can walk out of here through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Set Hallelujah. free in Jesus' name. Did we move the table? We did. You already did. Before I call, I will answer. And while you're yet thinking, it will be done. One of the things Lord did, I could not memorize anything in school. As like I said, all the tears I... But now when I got saved, he, he gave me the ability to memorize the Word. Yes, that's right. I know hundreds of scriptures. And if everybody stood on the spur of the moment, could you preach? <clears throat> Why? Not to brag on me. I couldn't learn ten words. My mother would go over and over and over. I go to, I go to school. I get three out of ten. One of my best, my best cards was... Uh, what do you call it? Reward cards. Reward cards. Put on they put on the card percentage. Thirty-three and a third percent. Much improved. Proof. Somewhere I have that. Thirty-three and a third percent. Much improved was oh I was getting in trouble. Oh okay. <laughs> you getting ready? We're ready. Everybody stand up. If you can, if you can, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Sorry, Jack, for a little late to come. I'll repent to him later. What time is it? Anybody want prayer? So I will ask for to pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of needs. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Crazy. Stand in line. One line. Thank you, Lord. I don't need the mic. Come on up. Come on. You're all three guys to catch him. You might do nothing. I'll be in the name of Jesus.
Healing you. 